Hello and welcome to this review of my Wooting 2 Lekker edition. For those of you who don't know, Lekker is a very versatile Dutch word that is generally said to mean tasty, but it can also mean good, nice, pleasant, healthy, sane, sexy, and even just very among others. I'm not sure which of the meanings the designers were thinking of when they made the keyboard, perhaps all of them. This is another highly anticipated review, I've received a metric fuckton of requests for it. I also have a review of the original Wooting, which was a pioneering model in the field of analog keyboards, and which was one of my longest reviews actually, at about 23 minutes. The original model used optoelectric switches, but for the next generation they decided to go with Hall effect switches instead. At first they contracted a company called Huano to make the new Hall switches, but those were found to be below par, so they switched to Gateron instead. Gateron made a very similar version of these switches before for Steel Series already. Those are the Omnipoint switches I've reviewed before. However, when the exclusivity clause on that deal elapsed, Wooting asked Gateron to make them a slightly modified version, and those are the Lecker switches. Compared to Omnipoints, Lecker switches have a slightly different housing design, slightly stiffer weighting, and most notably they're hot swappable, which Omnipoints are not. This also means that they have different LEDs. Omnipoint switches use a through switch LED, whereas the Lecker ones have to use SMD ones, otherwise it would interfere with the hot swap ability. They're also lubed, which I'm nearly certain the Omnipoints are not. Now for switches this smooth, lube really doesn't do much to negate friction. This is mostly a way to deepen the typing sound. I think the change to Hall effect makes sense, as they seem much more amenable to analog sensing than optoelectric ones. The original design, which was a modified version of Adomax's flare tech switches, had to use a complicated set of optics in order to focus and redirect the light beam to make the analog window somewhat acceptable. They managed to squeeze 2.1 millimeters out of it in the end, so roughly half of the total travel. But with Hall effect, you can measure full range without too much difficulty. Plus, it is much easier to keep the signal consistent, especially across different positions on the keyboard, which was something that the original had difficulty with. All effect switches are also even more robust than optoelectric switches. There is no lifetime of the LEDs or photoresistors to take into account, although the original had a lifetime of a few decades of constant use if memory serves. Both magnets and hall elements are extremely durable, with a near unlimited lifetime, so these switches are all but indestructible. Although, to be fair, the same could basically be said of the original too. Officially, the M2BF is 100 million operations per switch, but I'm pretty sure it's actually considerably higher than that. I think the manufacturers just couldn't be bothered to keep measuring after that. Now, the biggest advantage of having analog sensing on your keyboard, in my opinion at least, is that you can adjust the actuation threshold on your switches, which is extremely nice. It allows you to fine-tune the sensitivity of the switches independently of their spring weight, so making a switch very light doesn't have to result in it becoming overly sensitive, or conversely, making them very stiff doesn't have to result in them becoming unresponsive. I personally like my linears to be very light, and the ones in this are pretty light, but the adjustable actuation allowed me to put them in the perfect spot for me, so that they were responsive without resulting in accidental key presses. Now, adjustable actuation wasn't a new thing even with the original Wooting, but that was the world's first keyboard with keys capable of analog output, I think. I talked about this at great length in my original review, so I'm not going to go through all of that again, but basically it allows you to output, for example, directional commands in the same way that the analog stick on a controller would. So, for example, in a racing game, you could steer more or less sharply depending on how far you press the key down, or you could control your acceleration, etc, etc. You could even set how the key press and the output would correspond, for example, linearly or extra steeply or the opposite, or what the plateau in the middle, etc, etc. And, of course, this feature is still present on this new Lecker keyboard. At the time, I found that this was pretty nice in theory, but there were only a few games for which it was both possible and useful to do so. See, in analog mode, the keyboard tells the computer that it's actually a gamepad, and not all PC games allow you to use controller and keyboard outputs at the same time as mouse outputs, for example. And along those lines, there were other things that made it difficult or impossible to actually use this keyboard in some games. And this wasn't even the keyboard's fault, it was just how most PC games 
games are programmed. Plus, of course, analog output isn't equally useful with all types of game to begin with. The situation hasn't really changed since then, games are still often not compatible or at least usefully compatible with this feature. Wooting have a list that they considered the keyboard to work well for an analog mode, including Rocket League and Overwatch, which are also covered in my original review. This list is by no means exhaustive, for example I also found that it worked really well with Blur, which makes sense that it's not mentioned because that game is criminally underrated and nobody knows about it, but nonetheless this still remains a very niche feature. The analog output is perhaps the Wooting's most unique feature. Since the original Wooting, more and more companies started getting in on contactless switches, and some even do analog sensing, but to my knowledge none of them adopted analog output. And I kind of understand, I mean, it's good when it works, but it simply doesn't work for most games. But if I'm honest, that's not what I buy the keyboard for anyway. The original Wooting also had the opportunity to allocate different key presses at different levels of the same key, a feature called DKS that's still in development. For example, you could allocate E to pressing E lightly, and when pressing it down further it would output Shift E instead. Again, a bit niche, but potentially very powerful. The Lecker Edition retains this feature as well. A bit weird that it's still in beta after all this time, but whatever. So what has changed? Well, as previously mentioned, the change to Hall effects which has brings with it greater consistency and reliability and a much bigger analog window, which is definitely useful even if just for being able to set the actuation point along a greater range. Also, the actuation point can be customized per key now, rather than just being a global setting. That's very nice. For example, I like to have my spacebar set for a deeper actuation point, because it avoids accidentally going prone all the time. Yes, spacebar is prone, because control is jump, as we all know. But anyway, you can also make WASD more responsive. I actually have them set slightly less responsive, because that's what my fingers are resting on by default, etc, etc. You get the idea. By default, the global actuation threshold is 1.2 millimeters, but I found that to be far too responsive, so I lowered it to 1.7 for the main keys, 2 millimeters for WASD, and 3 millimeters for the spacebar. And for me, that's pretty much perfect for these switches. Also, I found out a little trick with the caps lock key. Because it isn't stepped, it's pretty easy to accidentally hit it when you're trying to press A, of course. But if you stick the actuation point on 3.9 millimeters, if you press it off center, the slight tilt of the key makes it so that the magnet can no longer get close enough to the sensor to trigger the actuation. So you can only trigger it if you press it right in the middle, which is actually quite nice, I think. So I also use that. Please do note that although you can set the actuation, you can't change the weighting because the springs aren't MX compatible. They're the wrong size and you need non-magnetic ones to work properly in these switches. For those who are wondering, the keyboard periodically auto-calibrates itself to account for tolerances and differences in environment and temperature, which is actually very nice. That ought to really help with consistency and long-term performance, I think. It also has a new feature with which you can decrease the input lag, which is already extremely short being a contactless design, even further, albeit at the cost of switching off the backlight, but whatever. I guess this is for the really ultra gamer champs or something out there, there's really no way I can do this mode justice with my level of gameplay. Yet another new, unique feature is the rapid trigger function, which makes use of dynamic actuation and reset points. So instead of fixed actuation and reset points, it just looks at whether the key is going up or down or not to determine whether a key is being pressed. In theory, this allows you to rapidly trigger a key without having to straddle the exact reset point. You can set the minimum distance it has to shift before it can flip and I tried the default 1mm setting and I guess it was okay but I'd have to do considerably more testing to really get a good feel for that. I don't think it's super useful for a casual gamer like me but I can imagine it might be more useful for some specific types of games like Osu or something. Build-wise, it's extremely similar to the original Wooting, it even looks like it, although the top plate, which is aluminium by the way, is now very slightly bluish rather than just plain black. It isn't super heavy for a full size, but then again none of these modern contactless boards are particularly tanky. They mostly seem to focus on the switches, which is good in my opinion. 
It weighs 940 grams in total. I have no idea how to convert that into Imperial units, but thankfully you can do it yourself with this helpful instructional video aimed at Imperial audiences. What I do is just say, like, like, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> It comes with a detachable braided cable, as well as a three-piece cable gutter, and it's available in both full size, as God intended it, and TKL form. The keycaps are better than the originals, or at least more durable. The original used cheap laser-ablated ABS keycaps in order to be able to keep the product competitively priced, but this time they used die-sub PBT keycaps instead. Although, as you can see, they look really weird with the backlighting kind of spooking through them. And also, personally, I think the color scheme is pretty much hideous. But that's just me. I think they do also sell black double shot ones, thankfully. For me, though, that's just a side thing. The first and foremost thing about contactless switches like these ones, in my opinion, is the smoothness that they can grant. Now, when the original Wooting came out, it wiped the floor, smoothness-wise, with anything else that was on the market at the time. Forget your gator on inks and lubed whatnots, they cannot stand up to switches like this. So... Does the lecker still hold up? Well, yes. In scientific terms, it's fucking smooth as shit. And the weighting is nice to boot, by the way. It's very similar to MX Red, 30 to 60 grams linear. However, compared to MX Red, it's much smoother. And this actually makes it feel lighter as well. It's good. I like it. However, MX switches are easy prey. There's no way those can keep up with contactless switches. But since the original Wooting came out, some newer gen contactless boards have surpassed it in terms of smoothness. So how does the new Lecker board match up against its competitors? The best ones I've found so far are the Razer Huntsman, the SteelSeries Apex Pro, and the Corsair K100. And I'm also gonna match it up against its predecessor. Let's start with the original Wooting. Now, don't get me wrong, this is already a very, very smooth keyboard, but you do feel a difference here, particularly on off-center key presses. I mean, it's not really that the Wooting binds or anything, but the smoothness is affected a slight bit here, and the whole effect version stands up to this much better. So, yes, it feels smoother. And a bit more slippery or wet so to speak you can kind of feel the lube sitting inside it now as for the others collectively these three are the smoothest keyboards i know so basically this is the pool of death so to speak and they're all so smooth that it's difficult to quantify which of the three is the smoothest among them really there are some differences between them some are lighter or stiffer and some of them feel dry or more wet like these ones do but i consider them shared first place in terms of smoothness and this one can join that group now. Again, it doesn't feel quite the same as these others. There are some differences, but smoothness-wise, it is on par with the rest, which, to clarify, is quite an achievement. That means it's the shared smoothest switch in existence that I'm aware of. Finally, a word on the controlling software called the Wootility, which is now new and improved and has a separate Lecker edition. Now, although I generally hate controlling software packages, because they're generally bloatware that appears to have been designed by someone who's never seen or used a keyboard in their life, the original Wootility was quite nice to use, which was a nice breath of fresh air among programs like it. This new version looks a lot slicker and is still pretty easy and straightforward to use. Maybe not quite as straightforward as the original because it now uses a bunch of tabs, but it's still very easy. I didn't need to look anything up. But it takes up about 250 megabytes of disk space and over 100 megabytes of RAM when in use. Apparently, it's an Electron program, so maybe that's why it takes up so much memory. In any case, at least it doesn't silently keep programs running in the background when you close it down, like some controlling programs do nowadays. There are some special functions, such as turning the N-key rollover into 6-key rollover for legacy and BIOS purposes, and Chroma Connect. There's even an external experimental program on GitHub that allows you to use the analog function for the purposes of creating MIDI music, but I haven't tested that one.
It costs 200 euros or $240, which is pretty much the same as other contactless boards in its segment. The Apex Pro is $230, the Huntsman V2 is $250, and the Corsair is $250 as well, but that's not analog, so it's not quite the same. In any case, the Wooting is very close in price to the others. The original was considerably cheaper than that, I think around $160 or something, which was kind of a steal, but they no longer make those. It doesn't come with some of the extras that the other keyboards come with. For example, it doesn't have the display or the volume roller of the Apex Pro, or the volume wheel and media buttons that the Razer has, but of course it does have a bunch of unique features itself, which I mentioned before. Plus it has a couple of extra keys here, with which you can toggle directly between analog and digital mode, as well as different analog profiles. But unlike the Apex Pro, all of the keys are contactless, rather than just the alphanumeric ones, and unlike the Huntsman, it doesn't use Synapse. So, really, they all have their own pros and cons. Bottom line? It's a great keyboard. Really, it's an excellent product. It's expensive, but the trend nowadays is more and more towards the high-end market anyway. It's not high-end in the build quality department in the same way as those custom CNC aluminium case models are, but I think if they were to add that as well, it would turn into a really, really expensive board. This is more of a Switch Lovers keyboard. My kind of board. Anyway, that's it for this review. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.